Okay friends, the first thing we have to do to get started on our job is to safely raise and support the rear of the truck so the wheel's off the ground. After that, remove all of your lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Okay friends, something for you to keep in mind. Before we go ahead and start tearing this apart, I wanna make sure that you have an axle seal available for this because of course, we're gonna be taking off the hub, we're gonna be probably damaging the seal. Now with the wheel off of there, the next thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is come over here to where the flex hose mounting bolt is supposed to be. There's supposed to be a bolt that goes right into here. Ours is broken off obviously, so I'm gonna to have to go ahead and fix that later. But for you, go ahead and carefully remove it. After that's removed, let's go ahead and remove these two caliper bracket bolts. Before I remove those, I'm gonna make sure I have a bungee cord handy. That way there, once I remove it, I can hang my caliper from it. Let's start that back in just a couple threads here and remove the lower one. Carefully remove your caliper and hang it so it's putting no pressure on your flex hose. Next, you're gonna remove your brake rotor. If it's stuck on here, you can carefully spray some penetrant along the stud area and give it a couple loving bonks along this area. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you have a collection bucket underneath this area. We're gonna remove these bolts and there's always the possibility that gear oil's gonna come out. Slide this out of here. Now the next thing we want to do is remove the nut that's located in here. You're going to notice that it's not a regular nut. It's something that you're going to have to use a tool that looks like this to get off of there. It has four prongs and they need to fit into those grooves. Take this out, set it aside. Now with that nut off of there, this is nice and loose. Let's continue on by pulling it off. Sometimes you're going to have to use a little bit of prying. As you remove this, be careful not to drop your forward bearing. Let's get the rest of the seal off of here. All this area that's stuck on the axle is part of the original seal. Let's just take a rag and put it in here for now. So now we need to start removing these emergency brake shoes. For me personally, I'm going to be replacing the shoes, the hardware, and the backing plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut these springs because I have new ones. If you're not replacing them, then you need to be careful not to damage them during the replacement process. So there should be a spring right down here that goes from this hole to right there. Ours is missing, but essentially you can grab onto it with some needle nose pliers or even some cutters like this and carefully pull it off of there if you're not replacing it. After it's off, I'm just going to go ahead and spread these shoes and I'll remove the adjuster. Set this aside for now. Now we're going to move up to doing these springs right here. Just be careful with them. There's one spring on the outside and one on the inside. There's that spring. Now with the outer spring off of there, the easiest way to get the inner spring off is to actually move along to removing the anchor points next. So if you just press in on this right here, you can twist the little pin that comes through from the backing plate towards the front so that it lines up and then you can slide it off. Remove the pin from the backing plate, do the same to your other shoe. Now we can grab onto the emergency brake shoe and work it out of its mounting point. Now the next thing we need to do is remove our emergency brake cable from its bracket area. You're gonna find on the back side of this bracket, there's an area that the cable comes through and it has like three forks that come out that lock it into the bracket itself. We need to go ahead and squeeze it on those tabs. I'm just going to take a tool that looks like this, grab onto the spring, and pull it away. After that, I'll use a tool that looks like this, slide it right in and up against that bracket, this out of the way. Now by pushing this in, I'm going to squeeze all those tabs in up against the cable, and then I can draw it out through the bracket itself. Okay, now that I've gotten this broken free, let's get the tool out of the backside here. Let's go ahead and grab the cable. Slide this out of here. Now let's go ahead and remove it from the back side of the e-brake actuator. Set that aside. 
grab onto this, remove it from the area. Now it's a good idea to make sure that this is freed up. Ours is frozen, so we'll have to free it up. Now the next thing we want to do is move along to the back side here. We want to go ahead and remove all four of our mounting nuts. After that, we can take this right off and out of here. Once you have all your nuts removed, just take one of them and start it on a few threads. After that, we're going to continue on with a rubber mallet and give it a couple loving bonks to break it free. Let's get this out of the truck. Now the next thing we want to do is start breaking the backing plate free from this bracket back here. To do that, I'm going to rest it down on this area here. Then I'll take one of my mounting nuts, start it on here like that so it's level. And then we're going to give this a couple loving bonks to try to help break it free. There's one. Do the same to the others. Okay, that's the last one. Now we just need to get the rest of the backing plate off of the bracket. I'm just going to use something to get in between the two and separate it. Work your way around the whole thing until it comes off. There it is, friends. Now with the backing plate off of there, we want to make sure that we clean up the mating surfaces where the backing plate's going to ride, and of course, on the other side as well. Make sure these are nice and smooth. Now once you've cleaned up that backing plate bracket, the next thing we want to clean up is the mounting area that's on the differential itself. Clean up around these ears here, and of course, any of the debris that's up along this area as well. So now we're going to start preparing our backing plate. You're going to notice it came with these boots right here. You want to make sure that you install this now. I'm going to take this boot. I'm going to come from the back side and just slide it through. Just make sure it's sitting in the groove all the way around. We have that on. Let's continue on to putting the backing plate on the bracket here. I'm just going to slide it right over. Reach around from the back side, grab that boot, and just help it through. All right, now that we have that through and it's still in the backing plate here, let's grab our four studs and start them in. Now we're going to take our studs, slide them right through. Give it a loving bonk to start it. Now we can slide this unit on here. Start all four of your nuts on there, snug them up, and then we'll torque them to manufacturer's specifications. Once you have all your mounting nuts tightened, go ahead and torque them to 101 foot-pounds. Okay, now it's going to be time to put our e-brake actuator inside here. You want to make sure that you have it nice and free so it's not binding in any way. After that, you're going to want to take this area here and have it facing towards the front of the truck. So I'm just going to take it, slide it through this hole right here, and then out through the back side. Now with it in through there, we're going to continue on to putting on our emergency brake cable. Go ahead and put the hook down and through there. Now we're going to take this spring, push it this way, and then we're going to put the cable through its bracket. Once it's through, slide it in, and then make sure it's locked in. Now we need to clean up the adjuster here. You're going to want to take this apart, and then go ahead and unscrew this star wheel completely off of it and clean up the threads completely. After that, we'll re-lubricate it and then install it. Once you have all your threads cleaned up, just apply a little bit of grease to them. That's going to help make sure that it doesn't rust back up on you down the line. We're going to screw our adjuster all the way down, and then of course we'll reapply some grease and then slide this on as well. Before we go ahead and put on our emergency brake shoes, let's add a little bit of grease to this area. We're going to come along this, right up on each of these raised points on the backing plate, right along here, and then of course along the back side as well. Now it's going to be time to put on our emergency brake shoes. We're going to take the larger of our springs that came in the kit. I'm just going to slide it through like this. You'll notice I have the longer side coming through towards the rear of the truck. Now once this is on here, we're going to continue on to sliding it onto this area. And now we're going to put this area up and over here and onto where it belongs. Now let's put in the other upper spring. This one goes along the outside. I'm going to come right like this.
Now you can see I have both sides fully in there and nothing's hanging out. You wanna make sure that it's completely on because you don't want it falling off while you're driving down the road. So now we're gonna take one of our pins and one of our locking clips here, slide it through the backing plate hole, and then through the shoe. Once it's through the shoe, I'm gonna put it so it's facing straight up and down, and then we'll take our clip. You're gonna notice that the clip itself has a slot as well. That's gonna be lined up facing up and down. Now I need to press in on this clip. Once I have it in far enough, the pin comes through, we're gonna twist the pin and lock it in. Okay, so now I have the pin sitting in the groove right here. There's no way that it's gonna come falling out of there. Let's continue on to putting on our adjuster and then we'll come over and do the other pin. Let's get our adjuster on there with the spring. Now to do this, it's gonna be easiest if you go ahead and start the spring in, just like that. Now we'll take our adjuster. We're gonna pull on this rearward shoe, separate it, slide the adjuster in through the back. Double check to make sure your adjuster is sitting in the groove. This one right here looks like it needs to be pushed down. There we are. Now it's completely in the groove. It's definitely not gonna fall out. Let's get that other pin and clip in. So now that I have it all back together here, we just wanna double check everything. Make sure these are turned so they're definitely locked in. Make sure all your springs are latched into the shoe. And of course the adjuster is in the proper area. Everything here looks great, so let's continue. The next thing I wanna do is take some light sandpaper and come along this area here. Any places that you can feel that are raised, you wanna make sure that they're cleaned off. This is where the seal's gonna ride and it needs to be clean. Now on the back side of this, we wanna get ready to remove this seal along here. Typically what you would wanna do is get right underneath it and then try to pry it off. But obviously it's gonna to wanna to wobble around on you. If you don't have a vise, then just go ahead and take it like this. We're gonna come along this edge between the actual hub itself and the seal. Give it a couple bonks and try to break it free. Grab this out of here. That's part of the seal. Now you can remove the bearing, clean down your bearings, and clean out the entire inside area here. Now that we have this all cleaned up, let's continue on to get ready to install our inside bearing. That's the one that's gonna be closest to the backing plate. To do that, you'd wanna just apply a little bit of the differential gear oil to the actual bearing and then work it around. Once you have it on there, go ahead and slide it in here. Then we'll grab our seal and install that. Now it's gonna be time to install the seal. Look along the backside, right along here, there's a little spring. You wanna add a little bit of petroleum jelly to that area just to help ensure that the spring stays in there. After that, set it down so it's flat going into the hub assembly here. I'm gonna use a flat piece of wood over it and then I'm gonna hammer this down. Now let's get this on the truck. I'm just gonna put it on approximately halfway like this so it exposes this inside groove right along here. Let's apply some of that gear oil. I'm just going to try to fill up that channel. After that, we'll carefully slide this on. Now let's coat the outside bearing and put that on there as well. Now we're going to take this. You're going to notice that it has a little piton. That needs to line up with the axle right there. Start it in. We're going to torque this to 60 foot pounds. If you're using the original bearings, you're going to de adjust it seven clicks. If you're replacing the bearings and you have brand new bearings in here, torque it to 60 and then de adjust it five clicks. Now I'm going to take this back seven clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we're gonna go ahead and clean up the axle. You're gonna notice along this area here, you have a rubber O-ring. Make sure that that's in good condition and that it's clean. Once we get this cleaned up, we'll move along. Once the axle's clean, make sure you clean up these bolts as well. Get off all that blue thread locker, clean the threads, and then apply new blue thread locker. With all the bolt threads cleaned up and some blue thread locker, we're gonna come back over to the truck. We'll clean up this area along here. Make sure we don't have any gear oil inside of these holes. Grab the axle, slide it in, and start in the bolts.
Now it's going to be time to go ahead and put the rotor on, but before I do that, I wanted to show you about adjusting this. You're going to use a spoon or you can use a screwdriver, come right through the backside here, and then you're just going to go like that up against the star wheel that's located behind here. Now if you haven't already, make sure you clean up the mating surface on this hub area and on the backside of your rotor. After that, let's continue on to adding some copper never sees. Now let's take our rotor, slide it over this. Now we're going to check the adjustment of the e-brake. To do that, I'm just going to use a bar. I'm going to come in between this stud and this and gently pry. Essentially, you want to make sure that this goes back just a little bit. If it seems like you can push it back, 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 then you know that it's too far de-adjusted. If it only goes back just a teeny bit, it's over-adjusted. You want to have just the right amount of movement so it has no drag while you're driving. Now we're going to take our two caliper bolts, make sure the threads are clean, and add a little bit of red thread locker. After that, grab your caliper, slide it over here, we'll snug them up, and then torque the bolts to 150 foot-pounds. Let's get the wheel up on here. Start all of your lug nuts, we'll snug them up, and then we'll torque them to 165 foot-pounds. Now that we have the wheel torqued, let's continue on to tightening all of these bolts. We're going to torque these to 80 foot-pounds. Torqued. Now you're going to want to come over to your fill plug for your differential. Go ahead and remove that and check your fluid level. If you don't have any fluid that comes trickling out of here, you need to add some of your manufacturer specified fluid. Okay, so now that we're sure that the differential fluid's full, we're going to continue on to jacking up one side of the differential. Essentially, if you did the right side, you want to make sure that you jack up the left side. That way their gear oil will make its way down through the axle tube, down to those bearings. Now at this point, I'm gonna leave this for approximately five minutes and we'll let it do its thing. After that, we'll put it back down on the ground. If you're doing both sides, obviously tip it to the other side as well. Okay, so this has been sitting for a while now. I'm gonna go ahead and lower it down safely. Now we'll just double check our fluid. We wanna make sure that the gear oil's full. We're also gonna get inside the truck. We'll pump up the brake and then we'll take it for a road test. 